two Virginias. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of In Focus. This morning, we are putting the spotlight on a local author. Her name is Linda Hudson Hoagland, and she has written a number of poems and short stories. She also lives in Tazewell, Virginia, and she's recently released her 34th and 35th publications. Her 34th work is called The Cup and Other Poems, and number 35 is What Was That and Other Short Stories. So Linda joins us now in the studio with more on her work. Linda, thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me come. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited to talk to you about your life, uh, your work as an author, and some of your recent works. So we'll talk about those recent publications and other pieces in just a moment. But first, let's get to know you a little bit more, Linda. Okay. So you live in Tazewell now, but were you born and raised there? No, I was born in Charlottesville and raised in Ohio. Okay, so where in Ohio did you live? Uh, for the first part of my life, I lived in Portsmouth, which is right on the river. Mm -hmm. And then my dad had a job in Cleveland, so mm -hmm. we were moved to Cleveland. <laughs> okay, moved to Cleveland. And then you came back to Tazewell, so, or came to Southwest Virginia. How long have you been living in Tazewell then? I've been living in Tazewell County for more than 30 years. Okay. I've been living in the town of Tazewell for about 12 years, about 12 I think. Years. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. area in Tazewell beautiful. County. Beautiful. You can't beat it. Yeah, and it's great if you're an artist or an author to mm -hmm. have some time to think and put together your work. So, Linda, what led to you becoming an author and your interest in writing? When I was a, uh, in elementary school, books fascinated me, and I wanted my book name on the spine of a book. Yeah. And my teacher said, you have to write the book. But, well, there you go. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to have your name on the spine of it, you have to get writing. Uh, so, in, in your memories, what was your earliest work that you put together? My earliest work was a book called The Best Darn Secret. The only person that ever read that was my, uh, I think she was my seventh grade teacher. And she liked it, mm -hmm. and then I put it away. And I never showed it to anybody for about 50 years. For that long? Yeah. So, I'll... Uh, why did you keep it kind of to yourself besides your teacher looking at it? Um, I didn't think anybody would like it. It was a mystery, mm -hmm. and I love mysteries, mm -hmm. and that's what I do most of all. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I had my first snooping series book published called Snooping Can Be Dangerous, mm -hmm. the publisher asked me if I had anything else. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing I had available. So I put in all the commas and everything I mm -hmm. needed to because it was... I'm glad I had it on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> Sent it to her and she took it right away and I'm going, I wish I knew that 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, but just to learn all those decades later that someone was interested, maybe this is a lesson for someone else out there who's watching and who's like, yeah, I'm into writing or some something you're into, but you're kind of afraid to show that to someone. What advice would you offer to those people? Don't be timid. Get it out and show it to people. I needed to do that, but I wasn't aware that anybody would be interested. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I started writing, I didn't write mysteries, but my niche in writing mm -hmm. is mysteries. I started with a memoir, mm -hmm. and I went from there. Okay. So uh, what genre was your, were your early works then? Uh, my first book, other than uh, The Best Darn Secret, was... Uh, a memoir. Hmm. And then after that, I went into mysteries, and then I did my first mystery. Oh, that's really cool. Um, is that mystery now available for folks to purchase? Or? Yes, that mystery is it's called An Awfully Lonely Place. And it's about being on my grandmother's farm in Russell County when I was a kid. It was an awfully <laughs> lonely place. There wasn't anybody around. It was down in a valley. You couldn't see people, and they couldn't see you. <laughs> Thus the title, An Awfully Lonely Place. That's Very it. Very fitting. Where can folks purchase that book? Uh, at my website would be the best way to do it, and that would be lindasbooksandangels.com. I would sign them and mail them to anybody that wanted. You can also get them off of Amazon. Good, okay. to, good to know. All right, so uh -huh. Amazon or your website. Let's say that website again for folks one more time, and maybe they can grab a pen or, or jot it down. Okay. It's lindasbooksandangels.com. The angels are for the angel Afghans I design and make. You are a multi-talented lady. Oh, I stay busy. <laughs> <laughs> so do 
you also sell those afghans? Then? Yes, I do. Okay. Available on your website too? Yes, okay. they are. Right. But please don't order one right now. I'm so far behind. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, laughs> give her a little bit of time. You can reach out, but <laughs> give yeah, some please. Time. <laughs> uh, what else in your life would you say inspired you as far as your writing and becoming an author? I always wanted to write. I was just afraid to write. Hmm. And when I was in my early 20s, the um, father-in-law that I dearly loved, ha ha, <laughs> uh, told me <laughs> that I would never be able to get a book published. Never say never. That's right. It's all it took. <laughs> All it took is for someone, that's true, in life, one person to say, you know what, I don't believe in you. Guess what? Prove them wrong. I did. 35 mm -hmm. books later. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And Linda, so not only 35 books later, I have your resume here that you right. graciously dropped off for me to look at. So it's 24 pages long, and I've enjoyed reading through it. It's quite impressive. And we've been talking about your early works, but I see one of your works in your resume dates back to 1961. Is that one of the first books that you were That's talking about? That's the best darn secret. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So I also see you've won some awards and honorable mentions. What does that mean for you to be recognized for your work? Um, I've been recognized in various different places, but the only one who really knows that I'm recognized is me. <laughs> That's all it takes. I'm happy. You know. Right. Right, and that's all it takes is for someone else, you know, another writer, someone who recognizes talent to be like, you know what, right. she's got something going on there, mm -hmm. which is great. So you're also a part of writing societies and guilds in Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, to name a few. So how has that helped you grow as a writer? I, I've gotten to know a lot of other writers, and I've gotten to see how they do their things. And boy, are we different. <laughs> <laughs> in I mean, what ways? Uh, many of them are disciplined and write every day and mm -hmm. me if I'm going to sit in front of a computer It's not going to happen <laughs> Yeah, okay. so I, I do it by pen. I, okay. I pen and paper mm -hmm. And then I got to put it into the computer and that is so much like work. It's not even funny <laughs> <laughs> If you ever need someone to type let me know I'm used to typing all day long <laughs> here at WVVA I'll come over to your house and be like all right Linda. What do we have today? Oh, <laughs> Start boy. typing away. I understand that it's tedious though But how do you think writing out like on paper before putting it into the computer? How does that help you through that process? I have the brain hand connection much better with that <laughs> pen in the hand if I'm in front of the cube computer, I'll go blank. I just mm -hmm. won't even see mm -hmm. anything in front of me. So I've got to do that with a pen and ink. Right. Well, that might be some good advice for folks out there anyway. That might be a good place to start for your rough draft. If you're having trouble and you're sitting in front of a computer, maybe just write out. Write it out. Write out your, mm -hmm. your thoughts. All right. We have much more to talk about after this, including some of Linda's recent works. So we'll be talking about work number 34 and 35 right after this break. We'll be right back. Good morning once again, everyone. Welcome back to this edition of In Focus. This morning, we've been talking to author Linda Hudson Hoagland, who lives in Tazewell County. She has works number 34, 35 out right now. So we have The Cup and other poems that I have right here that Linda has let me borrow. And what was that and other short stories? So two books right here. So Linda, let's talk first about this lovely book, The Cup and Other Poems. What is this all about? The cup was the cup that my father used when I was a child. It was a coffee cup mm -hmm. and the saucer that went under it. Mm -hmm. We weren't allowed to touch it because it was his coffee cup. Mm -hmm. And it was always stained. It was clean, mm -hmm. but it was stained with the coffee. Hmm. So it brings back images of him. Is that what kind of inspired you as far as the cover art? I see the, the saucer there too. Is, is that what inspired you overall to put together this particular work? No, that particular work was inspired by another poet by hmm. the name of Jane Hicks. She was teaching a uh, small symposium type thing. And she said, just pick an inanimate object. And that's what I picked there. Okay, all right. And um, what's the process for you as far as when you're, you're sitting down to put together a poem? Does it take you a while? Does it just come to you? How does it happen? Poems, to me, I, I want them to tell a story, not be abstract. I don't want you to have to sit and think about them for two years right. to figure out what I said. <laughs> uh, because they are actually stories. And yeah. if I get them down in short story form, and I mean short because poems usually are very short. Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to be able to understand that short version. 
Mm -hmm. Is there a work in particular here that um, stands out to you that you'd maybe like to read? And I'll give you a second to look this over. But oh, uh, I, I love that cover that. art too. I'm just struck by that. And just the story behind it as far as the tea and the saucer and the story of your father. And it, okay, I have one called A Hole in My Heart. No one warned, warned me of the cavity, the big hole in my heart that would form following the death of my husband. The cavity grew and grew until I found something to fill it, and that was the love of my two adult sons. The hole will never disappear, but it is smaller, and I am grateful. Hmm. Based on your real life experience. Yes, I lost my husband about 13 years ago. And he appears in a lot of my <laughs> writings, whether he wants to or not, he does. <laughs> and how do you think that your work might help someone else out there? Maybe they've gone through a similar experience or otherwise. How do you think it might help them? Uh, the best thing you can do if you've got a problem that is real heavy on mm -hmm. your heart is to write about it mm -hmm. because you're releasing all of your feelings into that paper. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book about him, and it's called Missing Sammy. I couldn't use his actual name. His family would have shot me. Uh, so I put, I called it Missing Sammy, but it actually was Missing Sonny. Best thing I could have done. I was able to talk about him then at, without crying after I wrote that book. Wow. And before that, when you talked yeah, about yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but really, I mean, writing can be a form of catharsis and healing, as Linda said. So even if you don't consider yourself a writer, maybe journaling can help you. Yes, any any form of releasing that stress helps. Yes, yeah, it certainly does. And Linda, what demographic, age group, um, who are you catering to with your work? Okay, I have a snooping group that is uh, right now. It consists of eight mysteries, and they're all cozy mysteries. They cater to the younger people in life. They, mm -hmm. There's teenage daughters and a 10-year-old <laughs> son, and I have experience with all of that. <laughs> and it's about a uh, mother who is a legal secretary in a small town, so she knows more than she should mm -hmm. about people. Mm -hmm. So when things don't seem right, she snoops, and her kids go with her. So it's a good, good group. Then the next group caters to the people my age. Mm -hmm. And uh, it starts with an awfully lonely place. The lady's about in her early 40s. By the time I get to book six, and you don't have to read these in order, mm -hmm. I just aged her. Okay. She's 70, mm -hmm. and she's always into trouble. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What kind of always, trouble does she get into? <laughs> uh, she's trying to find out. Oh, she met a new guy in the new book. She met a new guy. Her husband had passed on. So she met a new guy, and he has baggage. Hmm. And his baggage is an ex, and she's a dangerous shadow. And that's the name of the book. Ooh, OK. <laughs> well, you can't give too much of it away, but I already like the name of it. It's intriguing, A Dangerous Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> now, is that also available on your website? Yes, that's right. available, Amazon or my website. All right, let's mention your website again in case folks missed that. Lindasbooksandangels.com. Okay. What advice would you offer? We touched on this a little bit, but authors are really anyone, Linda, looking to pursue their dreams. Your story just sticks with me as far as, you know, people telling you no, or you're, you're thinking, oh, I don't know if someone will really like this. And you kept your work to yourself for 50 years. Yes, I did. So what advice would you offer to anyone out there who's just hesitant or not, they don't fully have that confidence yet? Um, if you don't have the confidence, you're never going to find out if anybody's going to like it if you don't put it out there. And I didn't, and I should have 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I had started writing other things, and they were accepted. So mm -hmm. why wouldn't they accept my first one? I, because I never showed it to anybody. Right. Yeah. Right. And sometimes it's that simple. Just show it to someone, and you never know what the outcome is. But you right. miss all the shots you don't take in life. So. Linda, do you have, do any book signings in the area or events? Where can people meet and greet you and learn more about you? Okay, I do any festival that's open and allows me to set up a table. <laughs> and I do, in local or anywhere. Mm -hmm. I also do food cities. I rotate yeah. among all of the food cities in southwest Virginia, some in Tennessee. So if you want to see where I'm going to be, it is listed on my website. 
Okay. When you're set up at Food City, do you have a booth there where, where you can meet the customers coming through? Or I'm usually right in the front where I see everybody coming oh. and going, and and that's and I'm not outside. I can't be outside mm -hmm. because I have books, mm -hmm. but I'm in the front, uh, around the cash register somewhere, mm -hmm. and. I have had more fun doing that. <laughs> I have met really strange people, but I like them. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Uh, what has the feedback been when you've met some people? Like, what do they say when you see when they see you there with your books? Uh, most of them want to know what connection I had to get into Food City, <laughs> and I can't tell them. I promised someone a long time ago who helped me get yeah. into there that I wouldn't tell right. anybody. Keep your sources confidential, right. as we say in journalism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they want to know why I'm there selling books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I go, because I get to meet you. Right, and I bet they're like, well, this isn't something we see every day when we're shopping for groceries. That's right. Is to meet the author. Uh, let's also talk about your other new work here, Linda. So it's What Was That and Other Short Stories. So um, it's a collection of 22 short stories, award-winning stories. So what, what's all inside this book? What was that? The uh, main title of that book was about a teenager who was going to walk to her girlfriend's house to, uh, to visit her, and we didn't have a telephone. We didn't have cell phones like you do now. Mm -hmm. And I took, and it was me, and I mm -hmm. took off walking, and it was about 30 blocks away, so it was a long walk. About yeah. halfway there, I realized I was walking through a tornado. I didn't know it. I hadn't seen it on the news or anything. I realized it was a tornado when I saw the roof flying by me. <laughs> Where was this? Cleveland. Oh, they oh have my never had tornadoes like that. So I, I, it never occurred to me that would happen. I'm just like trying to grasp this right now. You were walking about 30 blocks. You realize there's a tornado, and then what? I was in it. <laughs> a, a roof flew by me, and uh, th debris was going, and I didn't know why all of this was flying around. Mm -hmm. But I really wasn't being buffeted by the wind, so I must have been in the eye. And I oh. kept going, and I knew I had to get to my girlfriend's house or I was going to be in big trouble, and I yeah. just barely made it before all the winds started buffeting me. And what was going through your mind when you realized what was happening, though, when you were out in the open? And I had no clue what was <laughs> happening, <laughs> absolutely none. And I'm going, why is this happening to me? <laughs> places for you to be where there's not normally tornadoes in Cleveland and you're walking outside and there's the tornado. Yeah, and my mom and dad were home. They'd gone to southern Ohio to check on the house that we had there, so I had no way of getting to and from other than to walk. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine being in your situation, but you allude to that here in the book. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was fun. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Woo, I never want to be out in that situation. Oh, what other short stories do you have in here, and on the break, I'll give you a chance to look it over, maybe read us an excerpt, but what else is in here that may be of interest to our viewers? Um, I do a lot of, uh, I have a lot of fiction in there, but I also have about six or seven that were true. Mm -hmm. uh, do I want to tell you which ones were true? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> let you, we'll let the viewers guess when they look at the yeah, book. you guess. <laughs> <laughs> if you know me, you might figure it out. If you don't know me, just, Think, gee, she's she's got a good mind. <laughs> You're right. She, she's in, interesting at putting together these stories. Um, we do have to take another quick break, but that'll give Linda a chance to look over her book and see what she'd like to read. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to this edition of In Focus, everyone. We've been having a great time on set with <laughs> author Linda Hudson Hoagland. So, Linda, you are now going to read us an excerpt from your book, What Was That? Right. I have one in here called Ten Years Too Late, and believe me, that one is true. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there were five of them, which was two more than I'd been expecting. In actuality, it was four more vehicles than I had been expecting. I could have easily handled two car loads, but as it turned out on that day, instead of five people stopping to visit, my ailing husband and me, 25 people, including infants, entered my house and expected a warm welcome. They all appeared in my driveway and front yard parking everywhere they could fit their vehicles. 
I know they weren't pa packed in five bodies to each car, but it was easier to think that that was how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you're like, how did all these people end up here? Were they all packed in the car? How did that happen? That scared me to death when that happened because I had to feed 25 people and I didn't have the food or the money to do it, but I did. I cleaned out my freezer completely, feeding these people all weekend. When they left or got ready to leave, I made sure they knew they were never to come like that again. Wait, so why did they show up at your house again? They wanted to see my husband because he was sick. Okay, but all of them came at, at once. At the same time. Unannounced? Yes. That can throw someone off. Completely. <laughs> Especially when you don't, you weren't prepared for the food and just having all those people in your house. Yeah. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> it was, and I'm going, gosh, <laughs> were they all, I didn't know there were that many. <laughs> what were you thinking as like more and more of them came in your house? <laughs> they had told my husband there would be five of them. Uh, that's a big difference between five and 25. <laughs> and what they didn't, ne well, what they neglected to tell him, there would be five carloads. Ah, that's an important detail. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm sure there's folks out there that can relate to some of your stories, though. I'm sure there's been times where, you know, people have showed up unannounced at someone's house, and they're just thinking, why? Why did this <laughs> happen to me? <laughs> and, and, of course, I'm sure they thought I was the unfriendliest person in the world, but I was panic-stricken. What was there to do with all these people? I mean, yeah, like, are you supposed to be like, Oh, I'm going to be the best hostess in this in the world when you're not prepared. No, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, what also inspires you for some of your your works that are made up, like your mysteries and all that? Like, what inspires you to write those and to create your characters? Life inspires me really, and little events in life that you may not find important, mm -hmm. I can really blow it up into something good. <laughs> Ooh, like, give me an example. Um, Floating, when you're, I have one in here called floating. Well, when you see people floating on water. Yeah. And there's no problem with that. They're mm -hmm. having fun. Mm -hmm. Except in this one, the floater is dead. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, big problem. <laughs> so it's a good one. And, uh, and then I go to other things. Let me take a look here. Um, as the crow flies, that happened, I decided it was going to happen at Hungry Mother Park mm -hmm. when you're driving along some of those mountainous mm -hmm. roads and you're being followed by someone you can't lose. They're on your tail and you can't get rid of them and you know there is going to be something bad happening. But you don't know what to do. So you need to read the story to find out what I did. <laughs> yeah, I do need to read that because that, like, sounds like a scenario no one wants to be in but like you want to read about it to hear like what the outcome was it keeps you captivated yeah I recently had that happen to me going over to hungry mother this past year there was a car a truck following me and I couldn't lose him because you're on tight curves mm -hmm. over there you can't lose him mm -hmm. so I pulled into this uh, overlook mm -hmm. and I pulled in there real quick and he pulled in right beside me, and as soon as he got in there, I was gone again. <gasps> I think he got the message. <laughs> oh, well, that's kind of scary, though. That that's was. That's something for, like, everyone to be aware of. You just don't know? No, you don't know. And I, I was sure that he was wanting me to find out what he wanted. Uh-huh. And I didn't, uh-uh, wasn't going to happen. Oh, well, that's smart of you, Linda. Mm -hmm. See, and you probably writing your books and your life experiences taught you, nope, we're not waiting I to find out. We're going to get out of me. here. <laughs> we're going to get out of here really quickly. Um, we have just a couple minutes left in the segment, but what other advice would you offer to those out there watching? Or what, what are some concluding thoughts you have for our viewers this morning? Um, never be afraid of what you write. Uh, mm -hmm. I know many people think that... Uh, what they write isn't important. And it may be, may not be important to me, but it is to you. So you need to write it down. And eventually you need to work it into a story mm -hmm. and make it worth reading. Mm -hmm. Right, because you never know the impact that might have on someone else. Right, you never know. And it helps people. And I've, my uh, couple of my books, I will tell them if they've lost somebody, I will hand them a book and I'm gonna say, read that, it helps. 
Hmm. And my missing Sammy is one that I give to widows who have lost their husbands because it's important. They need to know somebody cares. Right, and that they're not alone in their hurt. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really important. So again, Linda's books are available on Amazon, so they can go to Amazon and buy the books. And you have now 35, but more in the works. I have more in the works. I have a new snooping that I hope to have out very, very soon. It's called Snooping Can Be Unmarry. Hmm. Set, set around Christmas time, but it's not going to make it this Christmas. <laughs> <Okay>. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Too soon, but we'll be on the lookout for that. And then also, Linda, before we go, let's give your website one more time. Lindasbooksandangels.com. All right, well, Linda, thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing more about your new works, your life as an author, and we've enjoyed having you here on set. I have thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed this. It's great talking to you. <laughs> you too. All right, that does it for this edition of In Focus. The show is about people just like Linda and events in the two Virginias. If you have an idea, you can send me an email, mzosh, M-Z-O-S-H, at wvva.com. We hope you have a great day.